Hi everyone, I'm in my New York City hotel room. I'm halfway through a two week trip for work around the USA and I thought I would do a video on how I go about traveling carry on only. Carry on only of course meaning that you do not check your bags at the airport, you pack such that you can carry all of your bags onto the plane. I'll talk a bit about why I try and do this whenever possible, uh, talk about some of the factors that may stop you from doing it and run you through how I go about packing my bags to enable this to happen. So first up, why would you try and do carry on only baggage when you're traveling for work? Well, often when you're traveling for work, you have a fairly tight schedule. You're packing in a lot of visits or meetings. You've got some tight airport connections and you want to minimize the amount of time you spend away from home. One of the problems with checking in baggage is that checked baggage can get lost. It can miss connecting flights. It's an extra complicating factor that can interfere with your travel plans. And so if you can remove that factor where possible, it can increase the chances that you'll have a relatively smoothly running trip. This video is only applicable in certain situations. So firstly, only when you're traveling uh, by yourself, when I travel with my family and my kids, all bets are off. We have checked in baggage most of the time. Uh, that's a very different situation. Another thing about carry on only packing is that it imposes some restrictions on what you can bring. You obviously can't bring certain types of items onto the plane. Some of them have to be checked in, uh, if for no other reason, just for bulk or weight reasons. Uh, there are usually limitations on size and weight in terms of what you can carry on the plane. Uh, if you have certain medical or health conditions that require you to bring a lot of extra gear, then carry on only, uh, understandably, is probably not gonna be an option for you. And in my particular case, my carry on strategy relies on you being reasonably physically capable because you are not gonna be using roller bags, and I'll explain why in a second, uh, and which means you're gonna be lugging relatively light bags around, often for relatively long periods of time. Once again, that's not for everyone. Uh, this is only for or a certain subset of people who really want to prioritize and can prioritize uh, carry on only bags. So these are the two bags that I would carry with me on a longer work trip, more than say a day or two. This is my personal bag, which is a typical sort of satchel bag. You can fit a laptop in it, some documents, some headphones, etc. your passports, um, some other material. This is the one that would typically go under the seat in front of you when you're on the plane. This is the larger bag. I choose to use an over-the-shoulder or carryable uh, duffel bag. You can also use a backpack. Why use one of these bags? Well, there's really two reasons. When you're doing carry-on only, there are two particular restrictions that are often in place. One is around the weight and one is around the volume. When you use a wheeled roller bag, which you often see people carrying around airports, it devotes substantial weight and space to the wheel mechanism and the handle mechanism. Uh, and that is space that you can't otherwise use for packing your stuff. Of course, the downside of using a duffel bag or a backpack is then you can't roll it along the ground and that has some physical uh, implications. You need to be comfortable enough to carry one of these bags around for a period of time, especially if you're standing in queues for a while at an airport. So that trade-off may not be for everyone. Another key part of the carry-on strategy is vacuum bags. So you don't necessarily have to use these unless you are very uh, space poor. Vacuum bags don't really save you in anything in terms of weight, but they do save you some space. So this is uh, the bag uh, before I've wrapped it. The other cool thing about these travel bags is that you don't need a vacuum cleaner. You can just roll them and compress the air out of them and massively reduce the amount of space you need in your bag. So this is the vacuum bag. I've folded or rolled a bunch of shirts and some uh, pants into here. Uh, they have a little Ziploc uh, mechanism at the entrance, just like a Ziploc bag. You can uh, push the Ziploc shut a few times. Often they have a little device that assists you with this, but you don't need it. And then you just roll the bag to roll the air out of it. And you can also sit on it if you really want to get the last bit of air out. But once you're done, 
uh, you can see that the bag is substantially smaller. You can probably get rid of a significant percentage of the volume of the clothes. Doesn't make the contents any lighter, but does make it much more compact. You also need a toiletries bag. Uh, this is also uh, one that is compliant or mostly compliant with various transport security regulations. So you can't have anything over 100 mils in terms of volume in a liquid container. That's the current rules. So I'll just uh, empty this out onto the bed. And so this is basically toiletry, some or most toiletries plus miscellaneous uh, items. So I have some uh, spare uh, thread and needles for stitching anything up. I've got some safety pins, which are great if you have uh, buttons pop off, uh, general hygiene stuff, toothbrush, floss, floss picks. Um, for me, uh, a safety razor, you're allowed to take these onto the plane. Don't take a, a traditional razor, um, some moisturizing cream, uh, SPF as well so serves as a sun cream, uh, various uh, cold and flu medication in case you get sick, uh, maybe some sleeping tablets if they're suitable for you, check with your doctor, uh, deodorant, uh, uh, more tablets, a couple of bandages or band-aids, a comb, um, and also a small cologne dispenser. Uh, these are portable. You can fill them up from a larger cologne dispenser. Also works for perfume. Uh, very portable, very handy. One of the things you'll be doing a lot of on most trips is pulling your passport in and out of your bag or your pocket. Modern passports have all sorts of uh, sensitive stuff in them. And so if you bend or fold or get them wet, you can damage them and they can stop scanning at a lot of the automated systems. So I carry this minimalist uh, plastic sleeve. A lot of people at airports will give these away for free or they come with your passport when you get them and they give you a rudimentary level of protection without taking up a lot of bulk. Uh, very useful for extending the lifetime of your passport, which may have to last five or 10 years. Long haul travel on airplanes especially can be exhausting. One of the best ways to reduce that exhaustion is around noise. A plane is a very noisy environment for many, many hours. Uh, if you can afford them, over-ear noise cancelling headphones are great. They cut down a lot of the engine noise and will help you also sleep better on the plane. Don't forget to get some adapters so you can plug them in uh, when there is a entertainment system on the plane. Uh, they're relatively expensive, but if you can afford them, they're a fantastic investment, um, which will pay off many times over. You'll need to power your devices and recharge your devices on the trip. So you'll need some of these uh, power adapters for your phones and the equivalent for your laptop. Uh, if you're traveling in a different country with different power plugs, you'll need power plug adapters. You can typically get two types. One is the small uh, compact one, which is only good for one country. And then you can get these uh, universal types, which adapt to any country, but are much bulkier and don't always fit uh, in tight spaces. You may also consider a power bank uh, to keep your devices charged on the go, especially when you don't have access to a PowerPoint. Uh, just be careful not to get one that's too big and has too much capacity because you won't be allowed on the plane. Finally, one of the most important things, unless you're locked entirely into one charging ecosystem, are these multi-headed cables. Now, it can be very challenging to find one that does data transfer and fast charging or high speed charging on your particular phone ecosystem but when you do uh, get a bunch of them they're extremely useful uh, and they can pull you out of many tight situations. Although everything is mostly digital nowadays you may still want to bring along some physical copies of some reading material maybe you have to review something on the plane. Uh, for this a very compact document wallet, preferably a plastic one, uh, is very useful uh, for keeping, keeping your stuff a little less damaged in all the rough and tumble of transport. If you're traveling for work uh, and you're doing carry-on only and you're traveling for more than, say, a week, then the strategy is probably only going to work if you do some sort of laundry or get a, a laundry service at a hotel, which obviously costs some money and so it may not be for everyone. Uh, very handy to bring a laundry bag to put your dirty clothes in uh, that way it's very easy to do a wash whether you're using the hotel service or going to a laundromat when you're traveling with uh, limited space you don't have the luxury of carrying a suit bag with you if you're carrying uh, business shirts and a jacket 
Uh, one of the ways you can minimize creasing in your business shirts uh, is by folding them a certain way. There's lots of videos on the internet. This is the particular way uh, that I like to do it. Uh, and I'll show you that now. So you pull the sleeve in, you need to start with a fully buttoned up shirt, pull in the other sleeve, your uh, sleeves are sort of standing out at an almost 90 degrees angle, uh, just sort of smooth out some of the most obvious um, creases, fold over the bottom, fold over the top, and fold over the bottom once more. And then your sleeves neatly pack in here. If your sleeves are too long, you may need to fold them over once more. And then you tuck them in underneath. So they're sort of self-tucking, which is really neat. And then you have the other sleeve. Once again, I should probably have the um, cuffs buttoned up, but you get the idea. And then you folded it in here. Just pull out some of the uh, most obvious creases and then you have a nice compact uh, shirt fold that will fit into a smaller bag uh, quite easily. Uh, and it will reduce, not completely remove, but reduce the amount of wrinkles you get in transit. Same goes for jackets or blazers. Uh, you'll see a number of different ways of folding this on the internet. The way I like to do it uh, so far is you invert the jacket on one side slightly like this and then you can fold the other side in behind it, which gives you sort of some protection. And then if you need to, um, you can fold them up like this. Didn't do a particularly good job there, but then once again, you have a relatively compact jacket and you're somewhat reducing the amount of wrinkles that you get. Finally, everyone has their own clothes preferences. You'll have your own list of clothes. It will depend on the climate of the place you're going to. You might need to bring a lot of warm clothes. But one particular clothing tip I would have is what we have here on the screen, which are called easy jeans, although there's lots of versions of these. These are essentially very, very comfortable sweatpants that look somewhat like jeans. So this is something that you can walk around with. You can probably go to a casual dinner in, uh, but they're extremely comfortable. You can sleep in them on long haul flights. They're essentially like wearing tracksuit pants. They'll keep you warm. Uh, they don't uh, wrinkle too much. Uh, very, very practical, very, very comfortable, but they don't look like you're actually wearing sweatpants. Um, depending on your particular fashion style or lack of fashion, you may not feel the need for this or you may feel the need to wear proper jeans, uh, but for many people, uh, an item like this will be great. You can even see that this one has drawstrings, which you can't see because they're invisible, uh, that can help you tighten them. So you don't even need to wear a belt, uh, which is useful for going in and out of airport security, for example. Another useful item is one of these expandable uh, fabric shopping bags. The idea here is that this is for carrying extra stuff. In the worst case, you can tie it uh, using the handles to your bag as you go through an airport if you've got extra stuff that just won't fit. Uh, and the beauty of these things is they compress to a very small size and so they take up almost no baggage. You can also get backpack versions of these which are a little bit more bulky uh, but then you can carry it around if you need to go for a day trip. Absolutely critical if you're going anywhere with a dry climate, uh, lip balm for your lips. If you've ever had the experience of your phone changing time zones on you or not changing time zones on you and missing a flight because your alarm didn't wake you at the right time, something else you might want to bring is a secondary alarm that isn't your smartphone. So I've used a stopwatch this trip. You can also buy custom wake up alarms that are quite small and compact. It gives you a second point of redundancy uh, to wake you up for those also critical deadlines. In this day and age, uh, pandemics and other sicknesses are around. So if you choose to wear masks on your trips, uh, one of the things you may want to invest in, uh, apart from a number of masks, because you need to turn them over um, relatively frequently, are uh, these uh, attachments you can get, uh, which will massively reduce the strain on your ears, for example, from these uh, little uh, cables. Uh, 
cutting into your ears on long flights. These straps will put the strain on your head, which is a much better place to have it. You can also buy masks that actually do this directly. It depends what you have available in your area. And of course, uh, you may want to bring some tests with you uh, in case you get holed up in a hotel room and need to test yourself. Likewise, when you're on the plane, uh, you may want to consider bringing along some antiseptic wipes. These are very good for wiping down plane trays, handles, seat belts, anything you're going to touch a lot during the flight. Uh, depending on how socially awkward you feel, uh, wiping down surfaces in front of some of your fellow passengers, but you see lots of people doing it. Uh, another way you can somewhat reduce the chances that you'll get sick um, from long plane flights. In this day and age, uh, one of the things you want to do while you're traveling is minimize the chances of getting sick. Uh, things like hand sanitizer are very useful and you can get these uh, little uh, attachments to attach them to your bag or some of them actually come with their own uh, version of it. They're cheap, you can use them easily, um, very handy for keeping your hands clean. Finally, there's the shoes that you use. I prefer slip-on, slip-off boots, no shoelaces, very quick to get on and off and you'll be doing a lot of on and off especially through airport security. And this is what the personal item and carry-on duffel bag look like fully packed. So I hope you found some of those tips useful. I haven't gone through an exhaustive list of all of the stuff I bring with me on a carry-on only baggage trip uh, because a lot of it's just the common items you would already have on your travel lists. What I've tried to do is highlight a few, few particular aspects of how I pack for carry-on only, some particular items you may wish to add to your packing list to make your life easier when you're traveling carry-on only, uh, and I hope this helps for your next trip.